What's going on survivors? Draco Invictus here and we are doing another State of Decay 2 video and today we're going to be talking about outposts. Stay tuned. All right, survivors, so we are talking about outposts and how they differ from State of Decay to State of Decay 2. Now, if you never played State of Decay, let me tell you about how the outpost worked there, but let me show you where we're headed first. We're actually headed up to a police station that's right over here, so I'm gonna mark that on my map so that I can start driving that direction. In the original State of Decay, outposts work very differently. You wanted them clustered close to your base, because the primary use for outposts was to protect your base from wandering hordes. So they would set out traps, and as a horde wandered past your outpost into its sphere of influence, the horde would get blowed up. Blowed up? Blown up. Sweet Jesus, Draco. Use your proper words. Anyway, in State of Decay 2, outposts work very differently. So I'm going to suggest we use them very differently. I say don't cluster them, spread them out. And here in a second, I'm pulling up on the police station now, and we're gonna get this place cleared out. But yeah, there's some big differences. Number one is that outposts in State of the K2 do not protect you from hordes. They do not set up traps that you can blow up wandering hordes with. So that's number one. Number two, you can use them as way stations, like in between points between you and your base. Because as you're wandering through, and you'll see that there are several like glowing containers in here where you're gonna pick up your random loot, whether it's bullets for your gun, or maybe a new gun, or maybe a guy coming through a window, or maybe a cool sword like what she has there. And your outpost, is a place that you can drop all that stuff off. You can empty your backpack. Now you can't drop off rucksacks, the big backpacks of fuel or ammo or food or whatever. Those still need to go to your base. But everything else, all the mods that you pick up, the bullets for your gun, all the stuff that fills up slots in your bag can all be dropped off here. So this is gonna provide me one ammo per day and it only cost me 300 influence to claim. 300 influence is cheap. So don't be afraid if an outpost isn't doing it for you anymore to tear it down and go find a different one. And we're gonna jump into my map here as soon as I get this claimed. And we're gonna talk about what I mean when I say it's not working for you anymore. So let's jump into the map and you can see that I'm a good distance away from my base. I don't wanna to have to trek halfway across the map to go empty my backpack every time I fill it up. The biggest backpack that we have right now is eight slots. That's a lot of going back and forth and your vehicles can only hold so much. So here you can see I have another ammo shop and what I did is I set that up so that this whole little community, everything that you're seeing on the map I can run all that stuff that I collect right there to the outpost. Yeah, look at that, all that area. That whole area, I can clean that whole place out and run it right to the outpost. It's a whole lot faster than going all the way back to my base. So, I've set that one up there, even though I know that my end game uh, base is gonna be up there, I'll move it. Just like I'm planning on moving this one very soon. This is another ammo, or this is a hardware store. But as you can see, I've cleaned out most of the buildings around it. I have no use for it anymore in that location. I may go find another hardware store in another part of the map or some warehouse that provides materials, that plus one materials that I'm getting, and it'll give me another drop-off location for all of my gear. So my suggestion is, again, spread them out all over the map and move them as you need them. Now, I'll give you one caveat. My first playthrough, I played as a builder. My leader was a builder. So the legacy boon that I'm running right now gives me free power and free water at any base with no fuel cost and no threat cost. But if you need water or power because you haven't finished with a builder yet, then you may wanna, like I'm here in Drucker County and over in this area is the 10,000 gallon hat. It's a big ass water tower. 
So you may want to claim that as an outpost, not as a drop off location, but because you need water for your base, or you may find a power substation so that you have power for your base. So that you're not using mod slots in your base running generators or water coolers or anything like that. So here I am at my base. Notice I have six slots over there and it's all because of my command center rank three. And look at that, six slots. It's awesome. I got two more to fill. And I know what I'm going to fill them with too. So you have to have your command center fully ranked up. And then you need to find a signal booster. It took me a long time to find a signal booster. But the signal booster offers plus two outposts. If you can't find a signal booster, find a signal antenna. They're much easier to find. And you get a plus one outpost. So you can be running around with five outposts instead of what the four is that you get from your command center. So look for those items. Get those mods installed. You should have a mod installed in every facility facility in your base, just by the way. So now we're going to take a look at my materials, what I've got going on for resources. I'm almost plus two for food. That's awesome. I'm running low on meds. So one of those extra slots is going to be for meds. I'm great on ammo. I'm at a plus one and I'm running a little low on materials. So those last two slots will probably be one med facility and one materials facility. And those will be my six outposts so that I'm only running about a negative one for anything so it's easy to find more resources and I'm not constantly depleting my stuff so that's it that's all there is to it survivors let me know down in the comment section what you thought am I am I good am I right in spreading them out all over the map and moving them as I see fit or should you be clustering them up am I seeing it wrong you let me know down in the comment section. And you know what? You can say, hell yeah, I never thought of that before. Damn it. That's a great way of doing it. See, that's a comment I'd love. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Look, if you like this video, I certainly appreciate it. And I'd love it if you gave it a big thumbs up. That lets me know that you guys appreciate what I'm doing for you. And if you're new to my channel, make sure to smash on that subscribe button. Don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified the next time I post a video. And until next time, survivors, you take care of yourselves out there. This is Drake Invictus saying this has been the greatest day in my life. See ya!